Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Heart Healthy Foods, Myths and Facts. I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Nangrani. Dr. Nangrani has more than 10 years of experience in family medicine, emergency medicine, anti-aging, and aesthetics, and practices family and functional medicine at CHI St. Luke's Health, the Woodlands Medical Group. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me today to talk about heart healthy foods. Now, why are we really concerned about heart healthy foods? Well, heart disease actually accounts for one out of every four deaths in the United States, and it can be prevented. What can we learn about the prevention? Well, let's look at the risk factors. What is the what are the risk factors which lead to different kind of heart diseases? The biggest being um, unhealthy diet. The, physic, the unhealthy diet accounts for the number one cause of heart disease. Physical inactivity, which I think we'll all agree has increased over a period of time with a sedentary lifestyle. Smoking, you know, um, it takes about 10 years to reverse the cause of heart disease once somebody stops smoking. The different other medical conditions with increased inflammation of heart like lupus, um, colitis, you know, if there's inflammation in other, other parts of the body, it also affects the heart. Uh, genetics, can we really change our genes? Not really, but it is one of the unmodifiable risk factors. Age, and um, we cannot change that, we are all going to age, but if we can understand our other risk factors and what the risks are, we can definitely prevent a lot of other heart diseases. There's really no one heart healthy diet. That, you know, is a myth because the different diets on the market, I really think that we have to look at an individual patient and a person and look at their genome structure, see what their lifestyle is, and customize the diet towards them. What do we understand about cholesterol? Is cholesterol bad for you? That really is a myth. Cholesterol itself is not bad. Cholesterol is actually produced by a body. It is being utilized uh, to make hormones like testosterone, estrogen. Um, it gets produced in the liver. 75% of our body produces, a uh, liver produces the cholesterol. The rest of the 25% is actually coming from the food. So cholesterol levels, you know, are about normal over to, for up to 100 million Americans. But let's try to understand these numbers. What does the cholesterol really mean? Cholesterol is... Um, part of our body, and the high-density lipoprotein, the low-density lipoprotein known as the bad cholesterol, the you know LDL and triglyceride. It consists of all these three things. Think about, imagine them like, you know, balls fluffing it, going through the arteries. You know, low-density lipoprotein, which is the protein which goes and combines the cholesterol which is present in our body, accounts for LDL. When um, this is actually the part of cholesterol which goes, clogs up the arteries, creates the plaques and inflammation, and in turn leads to heart disease and stroke. But, um, you know, the high HDL is actually high density lipoprotein. It's actually, you know, the good part of the cholesterol, which, when higher, is protective in your body. So the, the total cholesterol number consists of. HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. Triglycerides are basically fat molecules which are affected by the diet in our body and actually can be uh, reversed with the diet control. Um, we do want the low LDL, the low density lipoprotein number, to be less than 100, and HDL to be higher, 50 and higher in women, and 40 and higher in men. Okay, let's talk about fats. Fats have just gotten a bad reputation, but really, do you need to avoid all the fats? That is a myth. They're good fats and they're bad fats. Good fats are your monosaturated, your polysaturated fats, which are not, which don't have the double bonds and do not get oxidized. You know, um, bad fat are your saturated fat and trans fat. I think we've done a good job identifying a lot of trans fat and um, a lot of uh, companies are uh, making sure that we are uh, writing the amount of trans fat in it. But trans fat is the worst one out of all, and it is from your junk food, 
and um, where we see uh, the trans fat. But your monosaturated and your polysaturated fat is important for your growth uh, in pediatric age, but we do want those kids eating to some extent um, some amount of fat because they are growing and um, your you know, uh, metabolism and everything does get affected uh, with the fat level. Heart healthy sodium, the sodium is, is that bad for your heart? Well, it's somewhat a myth because sodium is actually naturally occurring in a lot of foods. We do need sodium to a certain extent and a little bit more in certain individuals depending on what kind of environment they're working in. We do not want to eat more than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. The reason sodium really became a problem is from processed food and packaging. A lot of products in the market are using sodium for increased shelf life and other canned food. We were not meant to eat out of canned um, food and uh, to-go boxes, and that's where the sodium really became a problem. We do usually modify the diet for somebody who already has high blood pressure and want to see their sodium content a little bit lower because it directly does affect the high blood pressure. Other foods um, which we can go through it in um, one by one, oats. Oats are actually uh, good for you. The studies have shown that you know, one and a half cup of oatmeal does decrease the heart disease because it's adding the fiber in it. Um, and it is also, um, you know, again, it's the source, looking at where the oats are coming from. I'm not talking about the instant oatmeal with, you know, with the processed food and other hidden sugars in it. I'm talking about clean oats, the feel good oats, which actually do prevent the heart disease. Nuts. Nuts actually have good omega-3 content in it which is pro, uh, which is anti-inflammatory for your body. And um, a little amount of nuts actually prevents heart disease. Chocolate, I would have to say one of my favorite. Actually, um, the studies do not show it does a lot to prevent heart disease. Really dark chocolate is not bad for you in a small amount. And again, looking at the source, how much sugar is added in the chocolate. Eggs have also gotten a bad reputation, and we all went on these egg white recipes, um, trying to avoid the egg and the cholesterol part of it. But that cholesterol is a good cholesterol, and we do recommend you eat some eggs. Now, does it have the studies really shown that it prevents heart disease? Not really, but I think it's a good source of protein and also for not a lot of uh, micronutrients. So uh, having an egg in your diet is important, if not uh, daily, at least every other day. Margarine, I am not in favor of. I think this is one of the examples of processed food, um, which, you know, it has affected the diet. Butter or a little bit of olive oil is better source than uh, margarine itself. Uh, and margarine has not shown to prevent any heart disease. Oil, uh, there are different kind of oil on the market. Again, the monosaturated ones have shown to help and prevent heart disease, which we have learned from our Mediterranean diet. Red wine, um, red wine does not show to prevent any heart disease. And again, it has a lot of other risks associated with it, especially for women, um, increases the risk of cancer. So definitely, uh, uh, no, no. Coffee actually has shown to prevent heart disease. Again, um, you know, looking at the source, the organic, the green coffee, which has, you know, and the little amount has actually shown to prevent heart disease. Tea, turmeric are also anti-inflammatory uh, in little amounts have shown to help and prevent heart disease. And I think the studies are also mixed in that. Um, the, the way they work is from anti-inflammation. The new word in, 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 in heart disease is really inflammatory. We know now that most of the heart disease is happening not just from um, not just from just the food and dietary related, but it's also inflammation. And we, the, what we need to do is we need to try to identify what's causing that inflammation. And um, turmeric and anti-inflammatories, uh, we need more studies and good studies on those to show that they can help. Let's talk about the diets. Are these diets actually good for your heart? Um, my approach is moderation. You know. Um, 
paleo diet, um, we all know about it. It's a high protein diet. Um, I do not think it's really shown to prevent heart disease because you're missing out on a lot of green leafy vegetables in that diet and good carbohydrates, which our body needs. Mediterranean diet actually is the only diet which has been uh, shown to prevent heart disease. And the reason is it talks about you know everything. It's in moderation. It's uh, green leafy vegetables, seafood, the good protein, your lean protein from fish and eggs. Um, the DASH diet, um, we do recommend that for our patients uh, once they have had cardiac disease and outcome where we're really trying to get aggressive, um, but it itself hasn't shown to lower or prevent the heart disease. Juice cleanses, I think that's a great idea, uh, but are not in itself enough. Uh, for body and nutrition. The vegan diet, um, yes, it reduces a lot of inflammation because once you are on a vegan diet, you're avoiding a lot of other inflammatory uh, food, but at the same time, it does lack the protein and it hasn't really shown to prevent any heart disease. So what should we really be eating? I think a good balance of fruits and vegetables with a lot of antioxidants, like blueberries, strawberries, a good mix uh, of whole grains, uh, not, not processed, refined grains, low-fat dairy um, to some extent, and uh, lean proteins, again, not fried, not baked, not processed, uh, but really lean, fresh sources of protein, some nuts and um, vegetable oils. So if anybody has any questions on any of the facts that we learned today, please go ahead and chat them or ask using hashtag CHIHeartChat um, on Twitter or Facebook, and we can answer those questions for you. Um, if anybody has any interest in learning more about heart healthy tips, you can visit imaginebetterhealth.org for heart healthy tips and recipes. And we have a heart healthy grocery list that you can download. It's in the handout section of this webinar. And we just want to say thank you to Dr. Nangrani. I think we all have a better understanding of heart healthy foods and how to choose a balanced diet and how that can help reduce the risk of heart disease. Uh, thank you everybody who attended the webinar today. And again, if you have any questions, please use hashtag CHI heart chat. We do have one question. Um, the first question is, what are the pros and cons of using a multivitamin to gain better nutrition for your heart? Well, I think a, a multivitamin is a great idea because, um, you know, we do want to eat healthy and the most organic food, and but at the same time, we are missing a lot of micronutrients. And uh, a multivitamin can really help correct those mild deficiencies which your cell need um, to uh, process the cholesterol, to process the other um, things you're consuming. So a simple multivitamin with probiotics is a great idea and really goes a long way to prevent a lot of other diseases, but not just the heart disease. We had another question uh, wondering if we can watch the webinar over again to review everything that was discussed today. And that answer is absolutely. We will have it on imaginebetterhealth.org tomorrow. Um, and you can also find that using hashtag CHI Heart Chat on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we'll also post a link on the, on the CHI St. Luke's Health Facebook for you to go and check that out. Um, and we'll also send out a link in everyone's email. Um, for anybody that uh, registered for the webinar, they will receive a link to the recording. Um, Thank you so much all for joining us today and let us know if you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you.